and I'll tell you right now, Homeland Security would kick their butts in a week. What's happening here is we're building a domestic military because it's unlawful or unconstitutional to use American troops on American soil. So what we're doing is we're building a military. My best friend, who's a SWAT officer in Nashua, who came to Iraq with me to train the Iraqi police, sent me an email with a picture of him in the media on the streets of Watertown, Mass, wearing the exact same combat gear that we had in Iraq, only it was a different color. What's happening is Homeland Security is pre-staging gear, equipment, consistent. What they're trying to do is use standardized vehicles, standardized equipment. I saw a picture in the Boston Globe during the marathon bombing where there was a state police officer, actually there were two officers, they both had identical helmets, flak jackets, weapons, everything I wore in Iraq, only it was all blue. The officer on one side had a big patch on his back that said Massachusetts State Police. Another officer next to him, his patch said Boston Police. And so what we're doing here, and let's not kid about it, we're building a domestic army and we're shrinking the military because the government is afraid of its own citizens. The last time more than 10 terrorists were in the same place at one time was September 11th, and all these vehicles in the world wouldn't have prevented it, nor would it have helped anybody. So I don't know where we're going to use this many vehicles and this many troops. Concord is just one little cog in the wheel. We're building an army over here, and I can't believe that people aren't seeing it. Is everybody blind? That's all. One of the things that, that, that I think is important, and you and I discussed earlier today, was you know, one of the things we can do so for, you know, is, is not only you know, limiting state employees in terms of how they try to, or preventing them from trying to enforce aspects of this, but also, you know, for example, the, uh, the forced home inspections that, we've, that, that I've heard about, but also... It knows the truth, by the way. Yes. Do you think this, this amendment that, that you helped us draft today would prevent state employees from doing the types of things, home, proposed forced home inspections, but also limit local governments from trying to end run what we have done so far in the legislature? Obamacare may soon be knocking at your door, literally. A brand new federal program will spend a quarter of a billion dollars, 224 million taxpayer dollars, to send government home inspectors to your house. This is a more, a greater opportunity to, for an intrusion directly into your home. Therefore, you are subject to a random, unannounced inspection of your home by the Obamacare people. Well, the Department of Homeland Security is looking at a security manager who's in charge of buying weapons and ammunition. He reportedly moonlights as a hate-spewing anti-white activist online. According to his website, in order for black people to survive, quote, a lot of whites need to be killed. Why is a guy like this still working for the federal government? Look, this is DHS, Department of Homeland Security. This is the same exact agency that was issuing warnings to local law enforcement on domestic terrorism about Catholics and Christians and returning army veterans. This is outrageous that somebody who's in charge of buying weapons and ammunition for the federal government to uh, keep the homeland safe wants to kill white people and is perfectly fine with broadcasting it to the world. Some call it the ultimate firearm that changed the world. The famed Kalashnikov assault rifle. In the Central Russian Republic of Admurtia, as in the rest of the country, members of the Special Operations Unit of the Ministry of Internal Affairs rely almost exclusively on Kalashnikovs. June 25th, 2013, in Washington, D.C., the Russian Emergency Situations Ministry, Russia's equivalent to FEMA, signed an agreement with FEMA to, quote, exchange experts during joint rescue operations and major disasters. This according to the Russian Ministry for Civil Defense website. The Civil Defense website, however, goes on to discuss something that appears to be much more sinister. Russian so-called experts will be engaged in, quote, monitoring and forecasting emergency situations, training of rescuers, development of mine rescuing, and provision of security at mass events. 
This last line, that of providing security at mass events, has many people worried. If Russian experts were brought in during a disaster, we would have Russian so-called security forces. Let's call them what they really are, Russian soldiers, on American soil confiscating guns from American citizens. Let us also remember that after the Boston Marathon terrorist attack, de facto martial law was declared in the Watertown and surrounding areas. Looking for the unarmed teenager Jakar Sarnayev, hundreds of militarized police conducted illegal house-to-house -house searches. Citizens were taken into custody without being charged with a crime. If a de facto or declared martial law took place, would these Russian soldiers be alongside our militarized police? Would there come a time when the Russian soldiers were actually the ones in charge during the martial law? What is our own government, the rogue administration of Barack Hussein Obama doing? An electromagnetic pulse can be devastating uh, to, uh, to the, the, the grid. And it is uh, uh, not something that has to be, or necessarily will be likely to be, uh, carried out by an adversary. It can be carried out uh, by the sun. You could uh, uh, well uh, have a very substantial share of the U.S. Uh, go down from the uh, EMP. Our dangers that may come about to the grid and take precautionary steps uh, to deal with them. But we are behind. Uh, on the combative side of EMP, we're behind the, uh, the, the, the Russians. The New York Times. Their headline read, As worries over the power grid rise, a drill will simulate a knockout blow. The drill is called Grid X2. It's an EMP simulation. The exercise is an entire North American-wide exercise. Interestingly enough, the final planning phase is October 1. Due to resource constraints caused by sequestration, Air Force Space Command officials have directed the 21st Space Wing to prepare to discontinue operations at the Air Force Space Surveillance System by October 1st. By discontinuing operations, the Space Surveillance System would not be maintained in operational status. By deactivating the Space Surveillance System by October 1st, AFSPC would see a cost savings of approximately $14 million per year. I have received a possible emergency FEMA Region 3 alert. FEMA Region 3 consists of Washington, D.C., Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and West Virginia. This alert was sent to us by Senator Sheldon R. Songstadt, retired of South Dakota State. FEMA purchase orders for over 14.2 million for MREs and heater meals to be delivered to Region 3 by October 1st. FEMA purchase orders for 2 million pouches of emergency water to be delivered to FEMA Region 3 by October 1st. FEMA purchase orders for $13.6 million for MREs and heater meals to be delivered to Austin by October 1st. Nine-week training course for UN peacekeepers in CONUS to learn urban warfare. They're learning urban warfare and they need to learn English and U.S. weapons systems. We're having foreign soldiers learn our U.S. weapons systems. This has been going on since the fourth week of July for 386,000 troops to be completed by October 1st. $11 million in antibiotics to be delivered to FEMA Region 3 by October 1st ordered by the CDC. The World Health Organization held their second emergency meeting in its history. The second meeting in its entire history to discuss MERS coronavirus. Determined a vaccine must be in place.
by October 1st. 2,800 MRAPs must be delivered to DHS by October 1st. Then we were informed of a global EMP threat, saying the Earth barely missed taking a massive solar punch in the teeth two weeks ago, an electromagnetic pulse so big that it could have knocked out power, cars, and iPhones throughout the United States. No leave will be allowed for U.S. military from September 28th through November 5th. NORCOM yearly training for civil unrest is to be suspended until September 27th to be performed in northeast coastal areas. Date for release of QE3 report is to be moved to October 16th. All DHS agents must qualify with sidearm, shotgun, and AR-15 by September 28th. No mention of yearly less lethal qualification. The sporadic testing of GPS and communication satellites is coordinated for the very first time ever with a testing date of September 29th. POTUS mandates to FEMA and DHS concerning support for metropolitan communities dealing with the extreme climate change must be complete by October 1st. These mandates were issued during the last three weeks. Over 300 school systems in the U.S. have determined their three-day kits for each school and three-day kits for each student to take with them. All deliveries are scheduled for the month of September. All National Guard units will complete riot control and disaster assistance training during this year's annual two-week training. All units must have their training complete by September 30th. Daily testing of emergency broadcast system to begin on September 25th and run through October 2nd. Eastern-based Coast Guard units to perform massive group training, usually performed in the Gulf, in the Virginia and Delaware areas. This is a 10-day training mission to begin September 26th. Along the east coast of the U.S., a big mystery. Since June, an unusually high number of dead bottlenose dolphins have washed up on beaches from New Jersey to Virginia. And this month alone, at least 28 dead dolphins have washed ashore. Experts don't know exactly what's causing it yet. This summer, dolphins have washed up from New Jersey down to North Carolina, but Virginia has seen the most. Leaving the state's volunteer rescue staff so overwhelmed, they've even asked the public for help. This is very alarming to us. We are, our July numbers were seven times higher. Remind you as the day gets closer so you can stock up on snacks and beverages, but a comet is coming, a big and brilliant comet arriving in November 2013. It could potentially be 15 times brighter than the moon and visible in broad daylight over the U.S. We will be your Comet Network and we'll keep you updated. The panic and havoc seen in the Russian Urals last winter when a meteor the size of a house exploded in the skies, well, we could be set for a repeat. Scientists say the huge rock might not have been flying solo as first thought, but rather as part of a group of asteroids which still pose a threat to Earth. Is that a... Is that what we're looking at here, guys? Something's just not right. You, I would say this was some kind of marker or something if it was not for this cloud. Pull it up. Let's look at it close. This is the real image of what's inside that cloud. I don't know what the uh, cover-up is, but there is a there's something going on. Um, 
don't know why they're doing it so different than they have the other comets.